The Prime Minister's back in the country. He was, of course, in Singapore and Vietnam at the weekend. He seems to be doing a lot of foreign shuttling around the world at the moment. Michael Shoebridge is the Director at the Strategic Analysis Australia and joins us now. Uh, let's start with China, Michael. Um, while the PM was away, he was in Vietnam, I think, when this happened, uh, China buzzed... Uh, an American warship were actually cut in front of it in the Taiwan Strait. The Chinese have said, well, get out of our territory. Uh, you don't need to be here. Uh, what do we make of this? Well, Steve, the problem for China is Chinese behaviour is based on it saying it owns international waterways, like the one between Taiwan and China, and it owns maritime zones in Southeast Asia that international law has said are owned by Southeast Asian nations. And so we're seeing the disconnect be between China's words and their practical actions. In fact, the Chinese defence minister was confronted with that by a number of delegates at the Shangri-La dialogue the prime minister addressed. And then he went to Vietnam, of course, who've had their own problems, haven't they, Michael, with China and that ownership of those ocean and sea lanes around that part of the world? Yes, and this, this is the issue. Uh, the central problem with this idea that what we need are guardrails uh, between the US and China and that will manage the risk of conflict is it all depends on dialogue being relevant and China's words are in contradiction to their actions. So all the dialogue in the world doesn't fix the problem. Dialogue when the other party is lying to your face is not going to resolve hard security problems. That's the central problem here. While he was away, Acting Prime Minister Richard Marles uh, weighed in on China. Have a listen to what he had to say. China is not providing our region or the world with any strategic reassurance. But it's also important that transparency and strategic intent and the purpose of military growth characterise the way nations operate in the Indo-Pacific and, for that matter, the world. He went on to say that uh, he was haunted by the prospect of a US-China war. I think we're all haunted by that prospect, aren't we? Well, yes, we are, Steve, but we also see that credible deterrence can matter. So through the Taiwan Straits, it wasn't just a US warship. They were accompanied by a Canadian frigate. Mutual, multilateral deterrence requires other nations than just the US to step up. If the US is left lonely, then deterrence is much more likely to fail. The Canadians understand that. The Filipinos and the Vietnamese understand that. But we're not seeing Australia standing up and doing its part. We're just talking the talk. Even that speech, you didn't, uh, you didn't think that the, the Prime Minister w was impressive enough in that address in Singapore? No, I don't. I think he put so much weight on diplomacy and dialogue while he had the Chinese Defence Minister lying to his face and everyone else at that forum. That's why a Filipino got up and said... You've got all these words about peaceful resolution of disputes and the fact that you don't want confrontation, but meanwhile your Coast Guard is ramming Filipino fishing vessels and arresting Filipinos within Philippines' maritime zones. Why don't your words match your deeds? And the Chinese Defence Minister had nowhere to go on that. 